Hey everybody, it's Jack in the training department. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Teardown Tuesday. And today we've got a water solenoid. And this particular solenoid looks like it either came from an ice machine or a brewer, like a coffee or a tea brewer, or like a hot water brew tank. Uh, it's got a threaded inlet. It's got a little inlet screen. And it's got just a, a regular hose barb outlet. So it's low pressure. It's not anything here that's going to be under a lot of pressure. Otherwise it would have some kind of threaded or coupled fitting. Taking a look at it here, there's not a lot of marking on it. I don't know what it came from. But what we'll do here is pull it apart. There is some writing down inside here, but once we get this backing plate off, we should be able to tell what that writing is. So while I'm taking this apart, let's talk a little bit about threads. Now you hear me say that a lot, but when you see these little lines inside of a, an opening, that's a thread. And you can have an internal or an external thread. And there are different standards for threads, how they fit together and how they seal, and how they end up forming their pathway. So this is an external threaded fastener, right? The thread runs around the outside. And this thread will have a standard that it's attached to, whether it's metric or, or SAE, American. Uh, this case, you can tell it's made for something soft like a plastic or a wood because it's really coarse, has a lot of spacing, and it's really sharp. So, thread it into a, a plastic valve. This is the, the correct choice. Now, the brass part here, the threaded opening in that is most likely going to be a hose style or a um, pipe style thread. We call that NPT. And NPT threads seal on a taper, but you also have to include a, a sealant like a paste or a tape on national pipe thread, NPT. And the reason for that is you have a, a tapered fitting. They, they kind of crush together and they have an interference fit. The tighter you go, the tighter the interference gets. But there can still be a spiral leak path where a very, very small amount of material can run out through that spiral. Uh, NPT, you can usually tell because it's, it's pretty coarse and it's pretty big. So NPT stuff, like gas piping, is all pretty coarse and pretty large diameter compared to something like this screw fitting. Yeah. So the way they built this valve, they've got this opening on the back of the valve itself, and then they have this seal, and then they have this brass fitting. And this means that as a manufacturer, they can change this fitting out for whatever market it's going into. In the US, we commonly use NPT, National Pipe Thread. Over in England, there's a BSP, a British Standard Pipe, which is a different thread. It's, it's almost similar to like a garden hose thread in the US, but it has a sealing washer in it instead of using a, a tape or a pipe dope. So they probably change this out depending on what market the valve is going into. So we have the brass piece, it's threaded NPT, and then we have the seal. And then this little mounting plate is pretty slick. They've stamped in this hex pattern so that when this thing is put together and mounted, that brass piece, you can torque on it, and the torque gets transferred into this mounting piece instead of into the actual plastic itself. This plastic's really soft. There's not much to it. That's kind of a cool way to put that together. It takes a lot of force to stamp this in too. You have to have a pretty good sized press because that's a lot of surface area. All right, so now we can see the, the ratings on this thing. So when we're looking at it here, we've got 120 volt, 120 volt, looks like 10 watt, 50, 60 hertz, so it's AC. We've got a bunch of numbers down here. We've got a UL listing or a UL certification on there. So line voltage, 120 volt. So we can assume at that point that it's some kind of countertop piece of equipment or possibly an ice maker, but most ice makers need more than 120 volt. Some will run on 120 volt though. So we've got a coil here and this coil looks like it's keyed but it's actually been twisted around and, and broken, which is probably how I ended up with this part. 
can see that plastic key would have kept it pointed straight out like that, but this has been damaged. So let's go ahead and pop that apart now and see what the inside looks like. So we've got four more of these self-tapping coarse threaded screws. Get those out. These screws, you have to be really careful if you ever put these things back in because they do not have a lot of, of torque. You can't really crank down on these like you can with a large bolt. If you try and torque these too much, they will just pull that plastic thread out of the valve body and the thread down in here will just come apart. And that's what we call stripped. Once you have stripped out a threaded fastener, you're in trouble. You have a, a whole set of ways that you can damage it, strip it, but you also have a, a whole set of ways you can fix it. But you have to have enough material and enough strength in the material to be able to fix it. And in this case, with something this small and this inexpensive, if you were to strip out a, a fitting on this thing, you'd just get another valve. The amount of time that it takes to, to fix a threaded hole is usually not worth it. Last one. In fact, we could probably try and strip one out and I can just show you what happens once we get this thing apart. This is why you, I'm using hand tools and not power tools. If I had a power driver on this, the chances of it stripping would be much higher. Doing it by hand, I have a, a really good feel for how much force I'm putting in, how much torque I'm putting on the fastener, and whether or not that fastener is going to strip as a result. Alright, so let's pop this apart. So you can see we've got this piece here, and that actually is not coming out, so we'll set that aside. Then we've got the coil body here. So the coil body is just mounted to this steel plate. I'm not entirely sure how they did that. Looks like what they did is they had the coil body on this metal bracket, and then it looks like they crushed this together in one operation. There's a tube that runs down through the middle, but it's not continuous. It's kind of hard to tell how they manufactured this, but it looks like this was crushed together like a press fit. So this coil can't come out of this steel plate. So these two pieces are, are tied together once they're manufactured, which makes sense, right? They put the voltage on this steel piece, and if these can't come apart after they've been manufactured, that prevents mix-ups on the factory floor. You always know what the coil voltage is because it's printed on the piece it's attached to. So let's go back to this. So we've got a plunger here. You can kind of hear it clacking around in there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, interesting. So this is all one piece now. There's no more pieces we can remove from it. And our outlet comes up through. And this area here, there's a, a sealing surface down inside here, a little lip. And as these plastic pieces go together, there's rubber sealing down in there. And there's a real snug fit, and then that rubber seal is actually holding. So now we've got this plunger assembly. Let's see if we can get that apart. We've got a small little plunger action in the middle here. And when that coil's energized, I'm sure this is what's actually moving. So when the coil energizes, this plunger depresses in. It kind of draws it up and in. You can kind of see it moving there. Let's see if we can get that a little further apart. Might just be able to pull it out. Yep, there we go. So this is the Yep. So this is all one piece, this rubber diaphragm. And then this plastic piece is Part of the plunger. You can see there's some small openings in there for pressure. 
So it, it vents itself, but then it also uses the, the pressure of the incoming water to, to help keep itself open. So it's got a bleed through the center there. Kind of hard to describe that, but oh, almost lost the spring. So there's the spring, and here's the plunger. So we're dealing with magnetic forces whenever we're working on equipment. So we're, we're always going to see steel in relation to magnets. So that magnet is going to energize the steel and pull it up. This is an interesting setup though. So down on the very tip here, down on the very tip, we've got a rubber surface. And this is actually an indirect action valve. So we've got a very small bleed on the back there. And this plunger seals that bleed. So what's happening here, the incoming water fills this area. Oh, let's look. Let's make sure I'm right there. Nope. So it's filling this part down underneath. The incoming water comes in down here, fills this area, and puts pressure around the outside of this plunger, including this little tiny hole right here. Hard to see. See how close I can get it. Little tiny hole right there. So when the valve is closed, the plunger's down. The area behind has the same water pressure as the outside of the area in front. So with the area in front, we have less pressure pushing up because it's only pushing around the outside than we have on the inside pushing down because it's pushing across the entire back of this valve plate. So the incoming water pressure holds it shut. When we energize, our little plunger lifts off of this bleed in the center. So our little seal unseals that. Now the pressure on the back is dropped, it's reduced, because it's bleeding down through the center here, which goes into the outlet of the valve. So the pressure on the back is now reduced and it can't fill up very quickly because this hole is so small, a little tiny orifice. So it's bleeding it off as fast as it's coming in and it's not building any pressure against the back of the valve. So now we have the opposite situation, right? We have pressure around the outside from whatever our incoming water pressure is. So it forces this open and it's going to stay open until we release our solenoid and this plunger can seal this bleed again. And then that incoming water pressure is going to build and build and build against the back here until it forces it back closed again. So there's no big spring in here to seal this down. It's using just basic physics and water pressure to, to seal itself. And the only thing that's in here is this little tiny spring pushing on the back of this plunger so that when the coil lets go, that plunger can be pushed shut against that little tiny bleed. So it's a pretty slick setup, especially considering how few pieces there are. I mean, let's, let's put this all organized here. We've got a, a valve body, we've got a coil and a mounting plate, we've got this ceiling plunger, a rubber diaphragm, the actual steel plunger and its spring, and then we've got this plastic plunger that would sit in the middle of the diaphragm and move up and down. Uh, we've got the little machined inlet fitting and the seal for that and a couple of screws. So overall we really don't have that much here for what this valve is able to do. Especially considering that it will put up with pretty high inlet pressures. You could put 60-80 psi on these usually and they'll still function. But it's because they're using the physics of that diameter and surface area to make sure the valve stays closed even when there's no power applied even with high water pressure, so it's pretty slick. But we call that an indirect action valve when it, when it uses that physics principle and that little bleed orifice covering and uncovering to open and close. So, pretty neat one. Uh, I'll see you next time. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. 
If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.